Hi everybody, Martin the Flicking Feathers again today and I'm tying an olive dory or the animal um, it's a wee caddis pattern ideal for rough water it sits low but it's very buoyant um, and it's ideal for you know you can fish a pupa behind it or something if you want uh, very very good little pattern to have in your box as always I'll put a materials list in your description along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody who would like to support the channel get access to the members only content monthly fly tying classes as well as being entered into the giveaways alternatively you can like the video, share the video watch it all the way to the end or subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified of the new videos and you can come and watch them that all helps the channel so I've got my hook in my vise this is a size 16 it's a TMCO 100 SPBL and I've run on some uni and olive AO and I've gone up and down a couple of times right? you, you saw me there I went I could sort of a full layer and then I cross hatched up and back just to give a good base for tying in the the elk hair so that there's no any tendency to twist and that's the first thing we're going to tie in. So we've got some cow elk here, dyed olive. And I'm going to take a bunch that it's going to look like it's too much, right? The so I've got this go separate it with this here. That looks like quite a lot for this size of fly. But by the time I come in and clean it. And then I stack it and I take away any broken fibres, it'll probably be about right. You need to allow for a fair bit of drop, the wee short hairs and all that. So we'll hold it with the tips. And then I'll come in and I'll clean it, take any of the under fur and any of the short hairs away. And you can see that's already like thinned almost by half. Into the stacker. And because I've got the under fur out, it'll stack quite easily. feather there so I'll just stack it again that last scrap of feather in my stacker but that's better and if I hold this up it looks okay for the size of the fly now setting the length right so on a full wing your caddy swing you're coming back like but say three quarters of a shank to a shank behind the back of the body usually right on a full wing or if you're thinking about the natural insect anyway right the, the wing comes quite a distance beyond the back obviously this isn't a full wing so I need to measure it so that it's coming out behind the back of the body and I'll go for nearly a shank there right that's fine change hands I'll take just a couple of wraps right at the start of the bend maybe three have a look at the length of it how's it sitting and that to me looks okay right it's flared quite a bit but don't worry right it probably will lift up your butt ends again just spiral up to the front and, just, and leave a head length behind the eye Pull everything forward and just drop your thread over. One or two wraps is fine. I'm going to pull these up and take a few wraps just to make sure that they're held on top. I don't mind the stuff in the middle if it sort of goes around the shank, but I want the stub ends to be on top. Got one that's fighting me there, so I'll just I've still got to fight me, so I'll just break it away. And don't cut these. Right? I, I prefer to leave these uncut. I, I think it makes things makes life easier for yourself uh, later. You go to tie everything off. So 
take my rib, which I'm just using an extra small, that's copper wire, um, doesn't matter, gold, silver, whatever you like. Tying it on my side, coming right back to the, the tie-in of the tail, or the wing, whatever that is. I'm going to get some super fine dubbing. And all of use whatever you like really. Take out my wee box. And obviously you can tie these let the chocolate drop or whatever or you can you can imitate basically any type of caddis. I've got a good needle on and I'll just tidy this up a bit using up that bare thread and I'll start that right at the back and you'll see, see if you take a, a turn of the dubbing or two it will sort of gather that elk a bit better right and take that flare away slightly because it's it's not like biting in in the same way as the bare thread does and then just the better than that double body Right up to the back of the, the elk here there. I'm going to get a hackle of grizzly dyed olive. I'm using uh, an old cape I've got, it's a ewing that I dyed olive grizzly. It's it's like the old fashioned um, genetics that we used to get but these are actually, I, I quite like them. Obviously they're not as, the feathers are much smaller than on like a modern whiting or something, but I think it's that nice balance between the the kind of bugginess of like an Indian cape, uh, and easily being able to get small enough hackles for your flies. So I've bared some stem, and you'll see what I mean when I wind this. It's a bit kind of the fibres are not just as uniform. But I've got a 16 that I can easily get down the shank palmered. So I'm just going to tie this in. I don't even worry about the waist end, I'll just stick it into those uh, butts of the elk there. Good side face in the front, sort of wet fly style if you want to call it that. Let me take another one. Then I'm going to take a full turn of hackle at the front. Now that's sort of twisting on me a wee bit. Can I get away with it? Go back. I'll do it. Full turn at the front and then come down the body. And you can hackle this as densely as you like. Um, you know, you know where you're fishing. If you're going to be fishing somewhere with quite rough water, you can put an extra couple of tons of hackle in. But I would say you need at least um, four or five. So catch that with my rib. But you could go up to seven tons and then I'll just come up. Just go fast. Right? Don't worry about catching fibres. If you go quick it will come up. You know, it's when you start messing about trying to wiggle it in that I think you end up really catching the most. And at this stage you'll lift everything up with the waist, take a full turn at the front here with the wire, and I'll catch it off as well. Three or four turns to lock it in and break it away. At this stage I can come in, I can easily grab that uh, waste bit of my hackle and just pull the, the long elk hair butts away, trim that out I'll come in, I'll trim this away, I'll just push my scissors onto the hackle stem and take it away 
and now I can trim these butts. Grab everything, put the scissors against the hook eye and just make a single vertical cut. And I'll sort of tap it back. I missed one there so I'll just come in and get them. And then just to sort of, if you want to sort of flare it a bit more, you just take a couple of tons of thread through and that'll give you that wee nice caddis head. Draw it in back and lock it in place and then what finish under these butts. Now you can leave the fly like this. Um, it's up to you, right? You can leave it like this and it will definitely catch your fish. It will float a bit higher. But I like to sort of come in trim the underside so that it lies flat. You know, and what you end up with is this wee pattern that It rides very low, but you know it's floating, right? Uh, it's quite easy to see as well, actually, even though it sits low to the film. But as I say, it's buoyant, but you've got nothing on the underside, right? It's just... Um, one fackle fibre there that I can see on the camera. Where is it? It sits very low. There we go, I think that's it. I mean, you don't need to be this fussy at all. There you go, that's it. So, I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, give me a thumbs up below and I'll see you for another video. Take lines, guys. Bye.